Pulse. We have a bit of uh, an update on the situation in uh, the Republic of Niger for you because uh, earlier we were indicating that uh, there's a deployment from ECOWAS uh, mission to actually tackle the, the challenges in uh, the country, but there's a correspondence that we have excerpts of indicating uh, that there's a response um, coming through from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation uh, of the Republic of Niger, which is uh, indicating that it presents its compliments to the uh, resident representative of the Economic Community of West African States, uh, ECOWAS in Niamey. It goes ahead to say that it has the honor to acknowledge the receipt of a correspondent which is dated uh, August 6, 2023, uh, relating to the arrival in Niamey um, on August 8, which is uh, today by a special flight charted by the United Nations of a joint mission from ECOWAS and the United Nations and the African Union. The ministry uh, points out that um, following the sanctions decreed by ECOWAS itself at the end of the Conference of Heads of States and Government, which was on the 30th of July 2023, Niger's land and air borders um, with member states are closed and the organization of such a mission by special flight requires some special considerations by the Niger authorities, including a special exemption, which is not invoked in this uh, note um, from the resident representation. So while reiterating uh, their readiness to integrate and to engage in discussions with delegations on uh, or emissaries concerning the situation in Niger, as indicated to the mission led by uh, the former president of Nigeria, uh, that's uh, general retired Abdul Salami Abubakar, the current context of anger and revolt as a result of the sanctions imposed by ECOWAS does not make it possible uh, for uh, Niger to host the affirmation mission. So that's the latest uh, that we're getting uh, from uh, ECOWAS, uh, the uh, Republic of Niger, on this very meeting. We'll bring you updates in our subsequent bulletins um, and also uh, give you some updates on um, some other programmings on both radio, uh, online and television. And now let's talk about the new patriotic party because uh, the party uh, is embarking on its journey to select its flag bearer for the 2024 general elections. And one of the 10 candidates competing in that special delegates congress, uh, Joe Gatti, is confident of securing a spot um, in the final five paving way uh, for the main delegates uh, congress this year. A seasoned legislator and former attorney general and minister of justice, Joe Gatti, comes uh, to the race with significant contributions to national development and is confident of leading the elephant uh, family into the 2024 elections. Samuel Kucho Brace of our political desk has more. I want to be president so I can bless the people of God. And I will pray that God will bless me so that I can bless them. As a ruling new patriotic party gears up for its special delegate congress, former Railways Development Minister Joe Gatti is intensifying his campaign to lead the party into the 2024 general elections. He says he is confident of being part of the last five to head towards the main delegates congress. But be rest assured that God willing, I said be rest assured as God willing, as long as the sun rises and the sun sets, when we vote for the Special Delegates Congress, Jogati will be among the first five. During his tenure as a railways minister, he played a pivotal role in the construction of the railway line from Tema to Impakadan, featuring a steel bridge over the Volta Lake, enhancing connectivity and trade opportunities for the nation. He says his background has equipped him with a deep understanding of the country's developmental needs. In fact, everything that I've seen, everything that happened when I traveled for the past five days, everything that has happened to me since I joined this party in 1992 and served the party has convinced me beyond reasonable doubt that I am prepared for this time, a time such as this, where we need a man such as me to rule the country and bring blessings to God. He believes his extensive experience and strong track record make him a compelling choice to represent the MPP in the 2024 general elections and serving as a source of inspiration for millions around the world. I'm going to spend my time thinking about the fact that a teacher's son from nowhere has become president. I'm going to spend my time thinking about the hope it will give to people, to millions of people, millions of Ghanaians who come from homes such as mine. Somebody whose father died when he was six. 
can have the audacity of hope without education, where would I be? I'll think about how somebody has been through public service for so long, public service for so long. I'll think about how God has prepared me for the occasion. I'm ready to go. I'm totally ready to go. That is what I think about every day. Not about another thing. With a focus on inclusive policies and developmental strategies, he envisions a future where every Ghanaian can benefit from the nation's growth and progress. We will transform this nation. We together will transform this nation. We shall take this nation to the next level. Amen. Everything that my hand has touched by God's grace has been blessed. Amen. As someone with experience in the MPP flag bearership race, the Isikado Keten legislator has a message for the delegates. The message to the delegates is that their candidate is Jogati. I'll be coming to them. I've, come, I've gone to some of them. I'll be coming to each of them. And I want to assure them that by the time they finish listening to me, they'll come to the conclusion that there's one candidate and his name is Jogati. Jogati's bid to become the MPP's flag bearer is not merely a personal aspiration, but a commitment to serve his party and his country with renewed vigor. As the nation watches this process unfold, the question remains, will Joe Gatti be the one to lead the MPP into the 2024 general elections and potentially become Ghana's next president? For Joy News, I am Samuel Kojobris. And you can't disrespect me and expect me to join your campaign. Words of uh, the Deputy Railway Development Minister, Kweku Asante Wating, uh, to the camp of the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Obama, as he expresses his dissatisfaction at how some of the members of the camp uh, blatantly stabbed him during uh, a campaign to uh, visit some constituencies in the Asante Achim area. The Member of Parliament uh, for the Asante Achim South constituency says he is uh, hit by the actions uh, of uh, Bahamia's camp, who he uh, who saw him as an outlier. He has uh, thus announced uh, his loyalty to former trade and industry minister Alan Kojo Jermanting, describing him as a brother. Imano Bright Kweku has been following the Adrosu campaign tour in the Ashanti region and filed this report. <laughs> Rousing welcome by delegates and pro Allen supporters as the former trades minister began his tour in the region, paying a courtesy call on the paramount chief of Ajusu, where he hails from. Nana Afrani Okese IV blessed the flag bearer hopeful, throwing a challenge to his detractors over Mr. Chairman Ting's victory in the upcoming party elections. <laughs> I know it's all work. Even the detractors know it's all work. I'm solidly behind him in everything. The goals are behind him. You can bet over this. The team proceeded to constituencies in the Asante Achim area to solicit support with some government officials throwing their weight behind the former minister. <laughs> Deputy Railway Development Minister Kweku Asante Boateng announced his vehement support after he claimed to have been dejected by the Baumia camp. <laughs> When Vice President Baumia came to Asankari, we decided to go welcome him and some members of his team. None of them greeted me when I extended a handshake. You can't disrespect me and expect me to join your campaign. I am hurt by their actions. Alan is my brother. I cannot denounce him. If he wins or not, I will support him. <laughs> the 
The group headed to the constituencies in the Kumeru area and made a final stop at the Jusso. Mr. Chairman Tin touted his achievement to the delegate, indicating that he is the man to wield more votes from the Ashanti and Volta regions to aid a landslide win in the upcoming general elections. The NDC has more voters in the voter region. Vote for someone who can reduce their numbers there. Jerry Rollins has been the favorite of the voters, but they told me I am their new favorite after Rollins died. On the first day, the former minister visited eight out of the 47 constituencies and is expected to complete his tour in the Ashanti region within six days. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Kweku. And 35-year-old alleged fugitive and pedophile is uh, standing trial at the Wasagit court over 11 counts of sexually assaulting 12 minors. The accused, who is a popular master of ceremony for Islamic marriages, is alleged to, to have committed the act at his house and in the bush and gave the uh, 10 Ghana cities uh, with a promise of giving them opportunity to dance in public whenever he is uh, doing his MC. Uh, duties for weddings. Join News is Upper West uh, Regional Correspondent Rafik Salam has more. It is a case of public interest and residents of Wa trunk and flooded the forecourt of the Wa Secret Court, spilling into the streets few times, blocking vehicular traffic. 35 year old popular local master of ceremony for weddings, Rashid Ahmed, better known by his fans as Anata faces 11 counts of sexual assault at the World Sacred Court. His victims, ages ranges between 10 and 15 years. The alleged sexual assault read at the court took place between 2021 and 2023. Wearing blue black Muslim prayer gown over multicolored slippers, he was handcuffed at the back, sandwiched by uniformed and plain clothes policemen and taken to the court. He was motionless, wore frown, and clattered his teeth as the facts of all 11 counts were read to him. Anata denied the offenses during investigation and his causing statement. Most of the alleged sexual assault took place at his house at Adabia, a suburb of war, and the rest in the bush where they leaned on his motorbike for the amorous and beastly act. In most of the cases, the accused gave his victim 10 Ghana cities and a promise of giving opportunity to dance at marriage ceremonies where he will serve as a master of ceremony. Principal State Attorney at the Attorney General's Department, lawyer Said Abdul Shakur, who was leading the prosecution, prayed to the court for the accused to be remanded into police custody to enable them finish with their investigation. Lawyer Said Abdul Shakur also told the court because of the charged atmosphere outside the court, coupled with the public interest in the case, the accused should be kept behind bars for his own safety. He is a flight risk. Somebody who has left the jurisdiction before, we cannot be sure he will not escape. Considering the gravity of the offenses and the punishment that is likely to be meted out if he is convicted. We, have, we are talking about a minimum of eight years and a maximum of 25 years for each of the counts. If we succeed in our case, he might be going in for a long time. So if the court allow him on bail, we might be left holding the cheeky end of the stick. We might not get him to try. And we also say that it is in his own interest because the anger, you can gauge the anger in society. You can reach out to it. You can see that people are hungry. For 15 years of practice as a lawyer here, I've never seen this number of persons in court before. And this is the first time I've seen almost the entire society at court. If such a person is turned loose, we might not even get him to try because people might take the law into their own hands. The presiding judge, his honor, 
Jonathan Avugo granted the wish of the prosecutors and remanded the accused into police custody and to reappear Monday, 4th of August. In and that's all we have for you in this package of the polls. I am blessed to log on to myjoronline.com. We have stories uh, there for you, including uh, the story relating to the Bank of uh, Ghana governor, Dr. Ernest Anderson, where the NDC is threatening uh, and asking for his uh, resignation else they'll march um, to the headquarters of the BHG in 21 days. Thanks for your time. Next is Let's Talk Showbiz. Thanks for watching.